So there's two signings right now that Manchester United are really pushing for, and that is Jal Neves and Bramthwaite. And it massively depends on price, but United are working on the deals, putting in bids, and thinking they can get a deal done for the price they want. We're going to get into the latest stories on that and why maybe we can get a bit excited, at least on one of those players as well. We've got updates coming in and just general centre-back stories. One centre-back in Johnny Evans is about to reach an agreement to sign a new deal at United. I don't mind Johnny Evans staying for another year because he hasn't been bad, but like, like considering we let Varane go, who's much better, I don't know, Varane was on high wages and Varane is injury prone, but Johnny Evans was out for more time of injury than Varane. I'd have personally, you know, kept Varane and got rid of Evans, but I guess there's a character around the dressing room, it's not bad. We'll talk about that, we'll talk about Amrabat saying, we'll talk about all the stories going about, but I do want to start this sto- this new show by talking about Jao Nevis. So we've got interesting news coming in from Academy Scoop, they get lots of inside information, they've been talking about Jao Nevis to Man United for a while, now they were the people that said Forson was going to start, two days later Forson started, I remember when Maynard got his debut versus Everton, they said that two days before, they're very accurate with their information, particularly with Academy starts but also other news in and around United. They said this, both Ineos' relationship with Jao Neves' agent, George Mendes, and Manchester United's relationship with Benfica is strong. United's recruitment team has followed Neves for over a year with scouts regularly in attendance at games. We know that. We've known we've followed Neves for a year. We've been linked to him for a year. We've had scouts at games. We have a good relationship with George Mendes. We have a good relationship with the Portuguese clubs. That's true. Now, Team Talk are saying this. Now, Team Talk aren't as reliable, but we're going to talk about that in the next story that is more reliable. Manchester United is set to make an improved proposal for Jao Neves. It's believed that United could raise their offer to 75 million euros, which is 63.9 million pounds for the player, while there's also a sting of add-ons that could take it to 72.4 million mark. Now, I think you could get a deal done for Jao Neves around the 72 million mark. I think you could. Whether United will actually bid that much is another question. He's, he's got a 100 million pound release clause. And I think Benfica would probably accept something maybe at 70 million at the cheapest. Uh, I think potentially we could get something done for 70 million. But I think because United need a left back, a striker, a winger, you know, Elise, a centre back, another centre back, another midfielder, we need a more physical midfielder. I don't see us having the funds to spend more than 60 million on Jan Evers. Now, apparently, we put in a 51 million bid for Jan Evers. And if United could get Jan Evers for 51 million, I think they would put in a bid and they would have signed a 51 million. But apparently, we're going to put in a bigger bid. I'm not sure if we have the funds to get Nevers. Like, I know we want Jan Evers. I know we want to sign Jan Evers. I know we're in for Jan Evers. I don't think we were willing to put more than 60 million on, on any position this summer. I think 60 million is the most United are willing to pay for a player. Maybe with Nevers, they push it for 70 million because he's such a talent. Now, obviously, James of United Muppeteer said in this dis- Scored as I covered here. The Nevers links are genuine. Tier one source links genuine, but it's just about price. And I think that's the main thing with Nevers. United want to keep pushing on it, but it's ultimately whether Benfica bend to a reasonable level as they aren't going to be paying 100 million euros fees for anyone this summer. So United's chances of getting Jan Nevers massively depends on price, which isn't surprising in the slightest. We've known that basically they want Nevers, but United probably aren't going to push more than 75 million euros on one single player. Now, Benfica, they've got 100 million for Enzo Fernandez, like 100 million for Jao Felix. They've got like nearly 100 million for Darwin Nunes. Uh, they got they just know how to sell Benfica. They know how to sell. They know how to, you know, rip you off a little bit, which is which is a little bit of the fear there. Bringing you into more stories coming in on Jao Nevers here. It was said, and this is less reliable sources. This is Portuguese sources pushing it. And you've got to remember with Diogo Costa links last summer, you have to take Portuguese sources with a pinch of salt. But it was said that Manchester United are pushing for Jao Nevers and are expected to make a new offer to try and secure his signature. Apparently he made a 51 million offer, not been confirmed by Romano Ornstein. So I would even take the 51 million off a pinch of salt. They're now saying we're going to make a new offer in the range of like 65 million pounds-ish. Um, I'll be interested to see if we actually do that. I think you have to take this news with a pinch of salt. But sometimes the Portuguese media can be accurate, but they do like to write a lot of stuff for clicks. Now, they were also saying that United have made an approach for Jao Neves. United are seriously committed to signing the Portuguese midfielder and Benfica have made it known that it will only be sold for a big fee. And I think United have probably made an approach for Jao Neves. George Mendes was at Carrington to reportedly discuss a deal. Well, not George Mendes, but his, his company was at Carrington to reportedly talk about a deal for Jao Neves. United have been working on Jao Neves behind the scenes. United have been making moves for Jan Evers behind the scenes. They've had talks with his agent. They want the move, but it's going to depend on price. And I don't think Benfica are going to lower the fee, if I'm going to be honest. Now, we know that United's three priority marquee signings would be Bramfway, Nevers and Elise in each position, followed by a cheap left bat and a cheap attacker to back up Hoyland. And United would probably call that a 10 out of 10 summer. I love Jan Evers. I think he's brilliant. I think he's perfect. I just worry about the balance of Jan Evers, Mayno 
and uh, Bruno. Now, I know Neves and Meno can play deeper, but I almost think, do we want someone a little bit more physical, a little bit more of a six, and Meno can excel as an eight? I think Jao Neves and Meno are very similar, and, and that would be the only fear there. I think if you've got Jao Neves in, and then you've got maybe a Fafana in on top of it, a physical player, and that's how you replace Ericsson, Casemiro, and Amrabat, perfect for me. I think Jao Neves plus Fafana, brilliant, because he's 25 million. But I think you still need someone else on top of that just to get that balance. Now, I think if you look at midfield options, you've got Mount and Bruno for the 10, Jao Nevers and Maino for the 8, and then Jao Nevers, Maino and Fafana for the 6. I think that would be good midfield. Also, Tom, they could be there. But I think if we got Jao Nevers and Fafana and we signed two midfielders, which I don't think we will, but if in an ideal world we did, we'd sell them at 20 for 40 million, get Fafana for 25 million, plus 15 profit on that, put that onto the 60 million bid for Jao Nevers, turns it to 75 million bid, Benfica upset. That's, that's the ideal world I see in. Anyway, it all depends on fee, it all depends on competition, but there are other deals we're looking at, other signs we're looking at. Obviously, Amrabat, we've not made a 100% decision on that, but I don't expect him to stay unless Tenog stays and Tenog really wants him to stay. It could depend on the manager situation, but I think we'll let Amrabat go. It was said United keep fighting for Bramford, but Everton want for 75 million. Now, interestingly, the Muppeteers have said, as I've maintained for a while, United are putting pressure on Bramford, they want the deal done by June 30th, but... You know, they've got to take the price down with 75 million. Now, United are quite confident because Everton need to sell and because Man City don't need a centre back or Arsenal don't need a centre back, like no other big teams are going to willing to spend big on a centre back this summer. Man United's the only team actually properly in for Brown Like Tottenham had a look, but Tottenham aren't going to spend more than 50 million on, on a player. Maybe an SA, maybe a marquee player, but not Brown They've got Romero and and Van der Ven, it'd be silly for them to spend 50 million on another centre back because Dragerson doesn't play. So the way United know is, well, they're going to sell Brantwick to us, or he ain't going to move, and they need the money. And Brantwick could push, and he's not going to the Euros now, which does help us. United have a confidence they can get that deal done for 50 to 55 million. Um, and this was a summary of what was said on the United Muppeteers podcast by Free Eye. LLIJ4. Here was the summaries of all the latest United news. So give him a follow. But he said this, and this came from the United Mapuches podcast, that United's highest priority still is Bramthwaite. We're having talks with Everton, and there's a feeling that maybe it could come to a reasonable price of 50 to 55 million, which United will do. If it gets to 60 million plus, United walk away. We have also been watching an asset for a year, but it's definitely clear Bramthwaite is the favourite. But we have been in talks with both Bramthwaite, Euro, and Anasio. Not Todobo yet, which is interesting, but I think because Todobo is such an easy deal to do because of our relationship relationship with Nice. We want two centre-back signings. I think we're getting the first one done first and then we can leave Todibo to later on. I feel like Ineos have that confidence they can get Todibo and leave it to later on, especially if he's going to be like the 21 million fee. That's a rumour that's going about. Surely not. Now, let's carry on, to, on into these stories. Once manager situation is resolved, it's going to be easier to move for players. For Neves, the problem is always the price. They like Jan Neves, they're moving for Jan Neves as they confirm, but it's the fight price. Brampwick and Nevers are probably Ineos' two dream signings. It depends about the price. There is a real interest in Hulman. Hulman's a decent player. There's a few things about him that I'm a bit sceptical about, but I do need to watch him more to be a real judge of him. But I do think he could be a good sign for United, the physicality, defensive ability he has. And obviously, um, it's probably true what Nuri Dinamrabat said about Casemiro falling out with Tenaga not being injured. But that's irrelevant. Chelsea are pushing for Elise. They want to get it done. We've got to watch out for that. We do want Elise, but that depends on selling Sancho and Greenwood, which we're having a little bit of problems with at the moment by the selling. So if we don't get Elise, we may look at Desiree Douwe as a potential option. He does play more on the left, but he can play left, right, and in the middle. 18 years of old age. What a talent. Uh, Man United, I feel the review should be finished this week. Uh, he did say that he thinks a final decision could come Friday, but obviously that didn't happen. I'd assume United have come to the end of their season review now, and I assume the decision will happen early next week, but you never know with the manager situation. Which brings us into the last bit of all your latest Manchester United news, which I've tried to sum up in 10 minutes for you guys. So please do smash the like button. And of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Throughout the transfer window, I do a 10-minute video every day and then I do a live stream every evening. Sometimes we do live streams in the day if there's more to talk about. Like earlier, I was ranting about Kobe Maino getting stick online. But sometimes there's two live streams a day, but we do at least five to seven 10-minute videos keeping you up to date on all the latest Manchester United news that you need to know. So do subscribe for that. But we have looked at Nassio. We've put 45 million away for a centre-back. Watch Tottenham, watch Nassio, watch Euro, watch Bramthwaite. And we've offered Johnny Evans a new contract. An agreement is expected to be reached as well. So while I would have personally um, kept around and got rid of Evans, and while, you know, I'd like us to go and hurry up on Tottenham, especially if he's 21 million, I don't think he is. I think you get a deal in the 30 to 40 million mark. You know, hopefully United move. But at the end of the day, 
while we're moving for transfers and stuff, you have to take every bit of information that is coming out of a pinch of salt. It's Manchester United, the media uses for clicks. And I think because the manager situation isn't sorted, we're being held back in terms of transfers. So until the manager situation is sorted, you have to take this info with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying these deals are going to happen, but I'm saying this is who we want to sign. This is who we plan to sign. Will we sign them? I don't know, but I expect we'll be working on them. And when the manager situation is sorted, it moves a bit quicker. Thank you for watching. Please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time. Bye.